I mean, looking ahead next week, y'all play the Cardinals. This is about to be kind of crazy. Cardinals just slapped up 41 against the Rams. I, I'm just a firm believer. 41 points is a lot of points out in football. It's a lot of points. I don't care if the team is bad, injured, sorry, trash, good, bad. It, it does not matter. 41 points is a lot of points in football in general. So with the Lions, clearly a top-tier defense playing against a hot Arizona Cardinals team. What's your thoughts heading into this week? They better be prepared. This is not going to be an easy game. I think this could be looked at as a trap game. People may have the Lions winning on paper, but this is not going to be easy. The Lions mm. historically struggle against mobile quarterbacks, and Kyler Murray is the focal point of that franchise. So they're mm. going to have to be ready. He likes playing schoolyard football. Even if you look Facts. at the past two games for the Lions where they played against Matthew Stafford, who's a statue essentially in the pocket, and Baker Mayfield. Neither of them are considered mobile quarterbacks, and they were able to evade pressure and get away from sacks. Even though the Lions put Baker down, what, five or six times, yep. he still you still could have had him at maybe eight, nine, or ten if you wrap him up, a, wrap, yeah, wrap him up and put him down. And they mm-hmm. just weren't able to complete some of those plays, which gave them extra life because he was completing some dots after that to Chris Godwin down the field. So this is not going to be easy. Easy. Marvin Harrison Jr. is Oof. looking well, well above advertised in that offense. James Conner, who's um, I think very complimentary to um, Kyler's skill set as a running quarterback. The Lions have done a very good job against the run, but when you have a mobile quarterback to go with it, I think that's going to be their biggest challenge in terms of how they respond. So this isn't going to be easy. Um, again, they got to be prepared. They're dealing with some injuries. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown had uh, a last-second injury in the fourth quarter in the last drive that he's dealing dealing with. Uh, Panay Sewell played on a bad ankle. Like They had some stuff they've had to deal with, so – this is not one of the games you need to sleep on. I think with Absolutely. their bye week coming up in two weeks, they need to go into that bye week three and one. This is a must-win game. You don't want to be behind 500 at this point. You want to keep building that momentum, especially in the NFC North where teams that don't have no business winning are winning. The Vikings are 2-0, <laughs> and, oh, and it blows my mind. It's yeah. really bad. That is crazy. So they need to get focused. They need to be ready. They need to be prepared for a very hungry and a very motivating <laughs> Arizona Cardinals team. <laughs> so the game is going to be in Arizona, too, which is also yeah. going to add to the difficulty of this game. And I yep. just I, I got to read some of this because it was it's mind blowing and this is honestly my first time looking at everything that the Cardinals did numbers wise I've seen all the highlights they had against the Rams Kyler Murray we know mobile quarterback can evade plenty of sacks the dude does some magic in the pocket and getting out the pocket so that's already a challenge in itself like you said this man threw 17 completed 17 passes in 21 attempts 266 yards three touchdowns zero interceptions was only sacked once I'm James Conner, 21 carries, 122 yards. Marvin Harrison Jr., four receptions, 130 yards. This is a high-power offense, and it does scare me if I'm a Detroit Lions fan because, I mean, you played the Rams. You played the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Neither of their offenses are as hot as the Arizona Cardinals right now. And like I said, bro, 40 points is a lot, so that's the part that really makes me a little bit nervous. And I I think the game plan – I mean, you, you got to send different type of packages at Kyler Murray, man. It's, it's going to be difficult to stop him. It's going to be difficult to, to throw him off his game a little bit, especially because he has James Conner and he has Marvin Sahara Jr. So it, it's going to be difficult to already shake that offense and break them down. But I, I will say I'm, I have some confidence in the Lions because of who they have on that defense. But also it's going to be tough because the offense is going to have to come with it because if the defense slacks just a little bit, a little bit. I mean, it, just a little bit. You're going to be playing catch up and you're going to have to come with it. And we cannot see those same mistakes. And one of the things I love that you said, championship teams can't make these silly mistakes. Championship teams, Super Bowl teams right. don't make these silly mistakes. And I, I see it every week in football. Sometimes these games are just decided by one or two mistakes that happen. So, yep. you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see. And I'm excited for it. Um, and... <sighs> It's, it's just tough, man. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough there. So uh, anything you want to add on to that to the Cardinals matchup? Yeah, again, they just going to have to bring that A game for this one. Again, the focal point coming in for the Lions was the offense was supposed to be the unit that they could lean on. They have the most veteran experience on that side of the football. Defensively is where their youngest and most inexperienced at. They got a brand new 
kind of core at defensive line, adding in DJ Reader, bringing in Marcus Davenport, and then your secondary is basically brand new outside of Kirby Joseph. Yep. So to me, they're unfortunately, I don't want to pin this on them because if they do have a bad game, I'm not going to hate <laughs> them because they've done pretty damn good for these first couple weeks. So if they're due for a bad game and if it's against Kyler Murray, it's going to suck based on the timing. But I'm going to hope that the offense can keep foot with them and score uptick to around 30-some points. It's going to have to lean yeah. on that offensive line. It's going to have to lean in the run game. Again, it's going to have to be an A-game performance because they're motivated. They're in a division where it's kind of open right now. I mean, San Francisco yeah. looks a little leaky. Like I don't see anybody really taking a stranglehold of the NFC West. So it's going to yeah. be tough at the top for them, and the Lions need to come prepared if they want any chance of getting off that road game with a win. And, you know, that, that's 100% true. And you mentioned different divisions. And I got to bring this up because, I mean, I, I was talking trash all offseason. I'm I'm the main one. I'm saying, hey, the NFC North is up for grabs. Is the NFC up North up for grabs? Because, I mean, you mentioned Vikings. Hey, they've been winning some games. They beat the 49ers, which everybody found unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Packers, we know Jordan Love is coming back, but they've been taking care of business even without Jordan Love um, in these first two weeks. And then, obviously, you got the Bears still struggling to find their footing, but they escaped the win. Do you think it's, it's still clear that the Lions have the advantage in the NFC North? Yeah, on paper they do. Um, a lot of these teams in the NFC North outside the Lions are kind of dealing with new talent. Or they're mm. dealing with a major injury. Not having Jordan That's Love true. is going to be pretty, you know, detrimental to them. I mean, assuming they don't build any kind of momentum with Malik Willis. But, you know, mm -hmm. I like Chicago. I like some of the talent that they have. But, again, Caleb Williams is still showing some of those rookie mistakes. He's yep. still showing it's going to take a little while to grow. And not having Keenan Allen is a big deal. Like, I, he's always hurt a lot. And not having him for a rookie to support, that's, that's, that's pretty big for them. And I'm not buying Minnesota. I mean, I know they won two games, but you, with Sam Darnold under center, I'm not buying it. I think that's going <laughs> to come down soon. I love Justin Jefferson. I love the talent that they have on that team. I love all the talent they have on that team, not named Sam Darnold. So as long as he's under center, I think the Lions should be respected and viewed as the uh, as the class of that division. They just got to start playing like it because as of right now, they're underachieving, and that needs to stop. Hey, now nah, I'm gonna hold you to it because when y'all see the Vikings, bro, oh, oh my God, y'all better not lose. I, I'm gonna say that if Sam Darnold, I actually. It, 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 win or lose, it don't even matter. If Sam Darnold outplayed right, Jared right, Goff, really <laughs> if Sam Darnold outplayed Jared Goff, I'm going to be shocked. I, and this, I'm making fun of him. I'm, I'm giving Jared Goff hell. I'm giving, I just want all Lions fans out there to know I will be the most annoying person on a mic if Sam Darnold outplays Jared Goff in whatever week y'all play. I will be the most annoying. If that happens, Lions fans, PSA, listen to me right here. <laughs> if he gets outplayed, Jared Goff chance, no more. No Man, more. If you get outplayed by Sam Darnold, I don't ever want to hear Jared Goff ever <laughs> again. Nowhere. Don't do it at Ford Field. Don't do it at U of M games. In Meyer in the store. Mm. Nowhere. Ooh. Dead that if he gets outplayed by Sam Darnold. I've seen that. <laughs> Is that at Meyer? <laughs> Bruh, anywhere. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Nowhere. Hey, I, 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 I whew, this is tough for me to admit. Uh, since we're on on a hate Jared Goff train right now, uh, I did say Jared Goff was a top five QB. I know this is a, a, a crazy conversation, another conversation that we could finish for another day because I don't want to hold you too long. But I did say Jared Goff is a top five QB. I still think that's true, but he's just got to play like it. And yes. above all, I don't think it's anything for the Lions fans to overreact to. It was a good game. They made some mistakes. And the way I look at it, you'd rather get those mistakes out the way now rather than the back of end of the season. So of course. I still think it's a lot of hope. And there was some good things that we've seen. Yeah, we talked about the Lions and what they got to do better and all. But, I mean, like you mentioned, bro, the defense is impeccable so far. They played great. And we've seen Hutchinson making a case for defensive player of the year. So that's definitely great, too. So huge upside for the Detroit Lions. And above all, man, they just got to bounce back solid against the Arizona Cardinals, which is not going to be easy. <laughs> I think we can agree on that. But... Hey, man, no. Eric, bro, let these people know where they can find you, uh, where they can check out your work, where they can hear more of you, all of that stuff. Appreciate you for having me, man. Always, always a pleasure, for real. Of Follow me on all social media at I am Eric Vincent. You can tap in with me online there. Uh, check me out on Clutch Points. Again, I do coverage for the Detroit Pistons as we ramping up for the NBA season very soon. 
Detroit Lions coverage on there as well. Again, over at Clutch Points, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Top Title Sports. You can get all my content on there. See my face, see my videos, see my peoples on there. Uh, covering some NBA, NFL, wrestling, hip hop, Kendrick Lamar praise, Drake oh. Slender, all that good stuff. You can check it on my channel. Top title sports, I got you. Top title, okay, bet, bet, bet. And then, bro, I ain't even ask you. Before you go, I gotta, I'm gonna cut this convo short because I know you seen your boy Kenny got the Super Bowl. Oh, that's crazy. How many times he gonna perform? They not like us. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, plus five. <laughs> This, you think they're gonna let him say it? Times, bro. You think, I'm ready for 10 times, bro. I'm ready for 10 times. You're in the living room dancing? You, you turning oh, up I'm to it? Crazy. I got my chucks ready to go, bro. I'm ready. I got my elbows out. I'm with you, K Dot. Let's get to it, baby. Hey, I don't know if they're gonna let him play it. I'm just saying, I'll, I'm, I think they'll let him, but in moderation. Like, I don't yeah, think we get the whole song. Stuff. He gonna have to edit some stuff. He can't, he can't let, you know, certified you know what bring <laughs> off like that. That's not gonna work. <laughs> Oh, man. Hey, well, look, anyway, look, man, y'all got to tap in with my guy, Eric Vincent, man. Clutch points writer for Detroit Sports. Definitely all the Detroit fans, man. Y'all got to follow his work. Check him out. Super dope dude. Super dope individual. And also great writer. Great host, as you see. Um, great to have on air, man. I got to get you back up here, of course. Um, but anyway, look, Anytime, man. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Definitely got to get you back up here, especially as the basketball season roll around. Got to talk oh, about yeah. them pistons and stuff. So we're going we gonna to bring you back for sure.